I told the governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, that I disagree strongly with his decision to open certain facilities which are in violation of the Phase 1 guidelines for the incredible people of Georgia. They're incredible people. I love those people. They are they're great. At the same time, he must do what he thinks is right. I want him to do what he thinks is right. Uh, but I disagree with him on what he's doing. But I want to let the governors do. Now, if I see something totally egregious, totally out of line, I'll do. But I think spas and beauty salons and tattoo parlors and barber shops in uh, phase one, we're going to have phase two very soon, is just too soon. I think it's too soon. And I love the people. I love. I love those people that use all of those things, the spas and the beauty parlors and barber shops, tattoo parlors. I love them. But they can wait a little bit longer, just a little bit, not, not much, because safety has to predominate. We have to have that. We have to have that. Did I mention how much I love the people that use tattoo parlors? I love them. They're great people, but they just have to wait just a little bit, a little bit longer. Brian Kemp, I agree with what you're doing, but I don't strongly. Okay, really? That that was obviously President Trump. Basically, he's putting out two different messages, right, uh, about Georgia. And uh, Governor Brian Kemp's plan, of course, to reopen his state's economy. Uh, now, on Monday, Kemp announced Georgia would allow nail salons, massage therapists, bowling alleys, and gyms to open on Friday. In-person church services will resume, on uh, obviously, on Sundays. Uh, and restaurants and movie theaters can open on Monday. His orders also bar cities from imposing their own restrictions on businesses. So, hey, man, local government, if you want to if you want to restrict your restaurant, you can't do that. No, we're not going to allow you to do that at all. Now, here's the problem with that. So they say, well, you know, look, we're going to open them up, but we're going to have social distancing guidelines. OK, well, how are you supposed to get a haircut if you're going to need to stay six feet away from someone else. That, is, that doesn't make any sense. At Nail Salon, same thing. Tattoo parlor. You, you, you're going to get a tattoo from six feet away? How? How's that going to work? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't work. <laughs> now, restaurants, again, have an issue with circulated air spreading the virus through the entire building. So that's another problem with sit-in restaurants. That's why right now, of course, if you're going to open up you know, your restaurant, if, if you're currently closed, Okay, well, you can still do curbside service. Uh, that's safer. That's a safer alternative. Or drive through services if, if available, right? But not dine-in. And that's, that's uh, what they're saying. Oh, no, go ahead and dine in the restaurant, which is why you have restaurants in Georgia saying, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, I don't think I will. Uh, we're going to wait until the scientists say that it is time to open back up, that we've seen a significant drop in cases. Uh, so the guidelines, of course, are ridiculous. Um, you have medical experts that are saying Kemp is moving too quickly. He needs to slow it down a little bit so that we can slow down the spread of the virus. And so they're absolutely right. If you're going to open up by Friday, well, that's dangerous. Not only that, but if you're going to open up by May 1st, that's also not quite enough time. Now, that said, we could have opened up sooner. And, and I do want to open up as soon as it's safe to do so. We could have done that had we followed the South Korea model, which immediately, aggressively began testing as many people as possible. So you test as many people as possible, and then you isolate the people who have the virus and get them to quarantine. Then you can start to get healthy people back out. Great. And you can do that on a good timetable. Look, you have places that have also done aggressive testing. You've got Germany and that's starting to open up slowly. And so these are countries that did take this seriously, at least more seriously than the United States has, which if you can remember, President Trump is like, oh, it'll disappear. It'll be, it'll disappear like it's like magic. It'll be gone by April. It'll be immediately as soon as it gets warm. Really? It's warm in Southern states. And yet it seems to be taking off quite a bit in Georgia. There's over 20,000 cases and rising. Again, we don't really know necessarily know how many people have it because we still don't have enough testing, 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 testing. And we still need to ramp that up. 
And until we do, we don't know who has it. And so we don't know who trace contacts are. And we don't know who to uh, quarantine so that everyone else can go out and be safe and, and not spread this around. So that's the problem. That's a failure with the entire administration. So now with that out of the way, let's get to how Donald Trump is, of course, being Donald Trump and how she and how he just shamelessly kneecapped Brian Kemp. <laughs> Again, I love the people. They've been very strong, but I disagree. I don't think that we should open up yet, even though I think we should open up really soon. So you don't have to wait that long, but you need to wait a little longer. But you should do what you're going to do in Georgia. I said you could do what you want to do, but I don't agree very strongly. He says that, right? And look, his administration released an excellent three-tiered plan, right? Which had some very good criteria on when states should be able to open up. In, in, you know, and you, of course, you have to see uh, aggressive testing and you also have to see a significant two week drop in new coronavirus cases. Georgia does not have either of those. They have not fit any of those requirements. And so Trump coming out and saying, well, obviously they're not ready to do so. OK, that's true. That is true. But on the other hand, while he's saying this, he's also on Twitter saying, oh, you know what we should do? We should liberate the states. You need to liberate Michigan. You need to liberate Pennsylvania. Let's liberate the state. Oh, oh, but okay, wait. He's also supported the protesters who want to open up the states right now despite the risk because these people apparently want haircuts. Now, I'm not going to go after the protesters who are really worried about their jobs, right? Who have no income coming in, right? Those who you know have, have lost their careers, they're, they've been trying to get through this uh, unemployment uh, insurance. And of course, there are systems in Florida and many other states that are overworked, right, that are not able to process their claims. So these people are running out of money. These are people in desperate situations. If you want to protest here at that point, you are 100 percent able to do so um, without any sort of condemnation, because I understand, right, you are desperate. You are not getting the help that you need. Uh, because of broken state systems and, of course, what, that one twelve hundred dollars check that can get intercepted and stolen by your banks? That's a slap in the face. It's insult. So I understand those people, right? Uh, but if you're a business owner, you're out there uh, protesting because, well, you just want people to go come back to work so they can start making you more money. Well, okay, I have a problem with that. But now, that said, how can he say, that he doesn't agree when the state decides to open up too soon, when that's exactly what he had also been calling for on Twitter. Well, it's because he wants it both ways. He wants to have it both ways, uh, as always. He, he's going to uh, A-B test his audience, and that's what he does, right? He A-B tests his audience. He says one thing, and then it says the complete opposite, sometimes even in the same sentence. And then, of course, goes with what is more popular or he tailors his message to the person he's talking to. And then when he's talking to somebody different, completely different message, right? Uh, and so when it comes to the stay-at-home measures, most Americans agree. Over 80% of Americans, 81%, agree with the stay-at-home orders, even if it causes harm to the economy, right? Because they know that this is a, a serious virus and that, yes, it is necessary to stay at home, to do social distancing so that we can beat the virus and then we can all get back to work, right? We can all get back to our lives. Um, now, at the same time, his base is incredibly agitated. And by base, I mean mainly donors. Uh, they're very agitated. And they say, no, we got to get people back to work because I'm losing money and I can't lose money. So that that's really kind of the explanation uh, of, you know, why or one of the explanations of why they want people to get back to work, of course, because it all comes down to the donors. It all comes down to the stock market. Uh, people have lost too much in the stock market and I can't handle that. So, yes, let's get everybody back to work because guess what? Turns out I don't make the wealth. They do. My workers do. Who knew? Who knew? But the best part, of course, about this entire thing is the shipping of Brian Kemp right in the back, uh, because according to a source, Trump and Pence had called 
Brian Kemp on Tuesday night and had expressed both support and praise for the Republican governor's move to reopen businesses on Friday. So they literally called him up and said, I think what you're doing is tremendous. Uh, Brian, I, I, th I, think, I think your move to reopen the state is tremendous. I think it's great. Uh, you did everything that you needed to do. And I, I fully support you, me and uh, Mike Pence, my friend. Mike Pounds. Yeah, we support you 100%. And then the next day, come out and said, I don't support you 100%. I don't agree with you, but do what you're going to do. Hilarious. Hilarious. In fact, Trump also complimented Pence on his performance as Georgia governor, according to a source. And another person familiar with the call said, the call overall went well. But again, you saw the very next day. Uh, I strongly contradict what you just did. You would think that people would learn not to trust Donald Trump when he says something. But I'm expecting Kemp to learn a more devastating lesson. Um, because then I think in about two weeks or so, unfortunately, I hope I'm wrong. But usually I, I tend to be right about these things because I'm, I'm good at foretelling disaster. I did, after all, correctly note that Donald Trump was going to win the election. Uh, and so I'm pretty good on track records of disaster. Um, and I'm, I'm seeing that possibly in, in about two weeks or so, Georgia, Florida, and South Carolina, and any of the states that are opening up too soon, are going to end up becoming new infection hotspots. And then, of course, they're going to spread that infection right back out to the coasts. And so we're either going to have to do two things close up again and cause more harm to the uh, economy for longer or accept that, and this is the worst part, that lots and lots of people are going to die. And unfortunately, I can see the Republican governors choosing the second one because as far as lives go, I don't think they're pro-life at all. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc., we're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation, set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look. You know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron. Patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.